Hey everyone, Polly Wog here and today I'm going to teach you how to make your own volcano and we will do a chemical reaction with this using some vinegar and baking soda. So in your kit you've got half a cup of baking soda in a little plastic bag, you've got a bottle that's full of vinegar, and then you also have an empty bottle just like the one full of vinegar, identical to it. So the one that has your vinegar in it is going to be set aside. The empty one is what we're going to use as the base for our volcano. I included a piece of foam in your kit just in case you want something to stick your volcano on. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt my camera down and get started, but I do want to mention you should have a rolling pin on hand to make it easier for your clay. A little bowl of water is going to really help us work with our clay. And if you have a funnel, I recommend a funnel to make it easier to put our supplies in. But if you don't have a funnel, it'll still work with the little piece of paper that I included in your kit. And I'll show you how to do that when it's time to add our baking soda. I'm gonna tilt my camera down so you can see my hands. Okay, so just like you can see, I've got my little piece of foam. I've, I'm working on a craft tray because this is a messy project. And now I'm just gonna start with my clay. Now I do have a rolling pin here on hand. I'm gonna use just a sprinkle of my baking soda. I don't wanna to use too much, but I also really don't want all my clay to get stuck to my tray. So I'm just taking a moment to do that so that when I roll this piece out right here, it's not gonna just stick to my tray. Okay, so this is actually a really good amount of clay if you really take the time to roll it out, you're gonna have plenty for your project. Even if you don't take the time to roll it all the way out, it should be enough for your project anyways. Because this kind of clay really stretches well and you're able to mold it onto a surface. So that's why we're using this little bottle. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I've got my little piece of foam here. I've got my bottle that I'm working with. I would recommend gluing your hot, your bottle down using hot glue or taping it down using some duct tape. I'm going to get my fingers just a little bit wet and I'm going to start working with this clay. Now I'm trying to get the entire bottle covered, but I also want it to look like a volcano. So once my entire bottle is covered, I'll be able to add more clay at the bottom to really give it the effect of a volcano make it look kind of like a mountain. So I didn't include any paint in your kit, but that is a part that you can add on to this project if you have a lot of fun making your volcano and you want to really add more to it. You can add more to it by painting your volcano once your clay has dried. So if you let it sit overnight before exploding it, you could give it the effect um, an extra added effect by just painting some tempera or acrylic paint on top of it. So I'm just dipping my fingers into that water and that's helping me smooth the clay on top. So that's a really good way to make the um, clay stick to itself and stick to this bottle. Like I said, it is a messy project so you can see my hands are getting real messy. That's part of the fun of this project. Gonna turn it around so I can see. Just gonna keep on molding it together, pressing my clay, really making it stick. Now, if you chose not to glue it down, you'll be able to use your clay like I did right here in the front to help hold the bottle down as well. Okay. So now that I've got my bottle all the way covered, I'm gonna use all this remaining clay to make it really look like a volcano. So I'm using my rolling pin a little bit, I'm flattening it with my hands, and then I'm just gonna stick it on here at an angle so that it's not touching the bottle all the way, and then using my water to smooth it so that it sticks and letting it come off the side. So you could also put something else underneath if you don't like the shape of the bottle. There's lots of different ways you can make volcanoes, but having something on the inside makes it so we won't need quite as much clay. So 
So getting the clay a little wet or getting your fingers a little wet and then touching the clay makes it really smooth and easy to work with. You can see that it's starting to get a little more bulky at the bottom. That's what I'm looking for. I just really want it to look a little bit more like it goes out, like a little mountain. You can see I've got that clay all the way around. My hands are quite messy now, but that's okay. Sticking my fingers in that water. It's really helping smooth out the sides of my volcano. So I still have plenty of clay. I'm just gonna keep adding in spots. I actually am really okay with it being lumpy. And that's because no mountain or volcano or any kind of um, rock structure like that is actually going to be completely smooth and perfect. Even rocks that are smooth wouldn't all be completely perfect. So if it's really bumpy on my volcano, I'm actually okay with that. And that's because it just makes it look a little more realistic. So you can see that my volcano is really starting to come together now. And I still have some more clay. So I'm just working on adding them. Um, and any little spot that looks like it could benefit from a little more bulk or a little bit more clay. All right, and I'm just using that water, smoothing it out a little bit more. I'm gonna add that piece right there to really give it that look of a volcano right in front. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with how my volcano is looking all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash off my hands and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so my hands are washed and now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is adding our ingredients to make that chemical reaction happen with the baking soda and the vinegar. So to just dump from my bag or from this straight into the bottle is gonna make quite a mess and I might end up wasting a lot of my baking soda, which wouldn't be good. So if you have a funnel, you can just stick it right in there and then pour in from there. Now, if you don't have a funnel, I did include a little strip of paper that you can roll just like that. I made mine a little too big. There we go, just like that and then stick it into the bottle and pour that way. That'll make it a little bit easier, but ideally, if you have a funnel to work with, that'll make it easy. I'm not gonna use all my baking soda right away because I wanna be able to explode my volcano more than one time. So I used about a little less than half of mine to start with, and mainly I wanna see what's gonna happen, right? Is it gonna be enough to make it foam over the top or will I need to do just a little bit more? So now we're gonna use our vinegar to test and see how that explosion will look. Same thing, if you have a funnel to use, great. If not, it is okay to just pour directly, but just pour slowly. And just like that, you have an amazing volcano. Now, because I didn't let my air dry clay dry before doing it, it's probably not gonna be something I can save and do multiple times. I'll probably just be able to work with this today and then I'll have to toss my volcano. If you let yours dry, you might be able to save it and keep going. So I'm just gonna keep adding more baking soda. And this time I'm gonna add a lot. Now I'm gonna add my vinegar and see what happens. Just like that, you can see the amazing volcano explosion. And if I keep adding, I added enough baking soda that I can just keep adding vinegar and still get that awesome explosion. 
All right, everyone, that's it for this mini lesson. I hope you have so much fun exploding your volcano. And if you want to, tell your parents to post some pictures of you on our current families page so we can see the fun in action. All right, everyone, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this mini lesson and I'll see you next time.